when you have this range of a 26 year old doing RF microneedling um, to you know a 75 year old you doing RF microneedling. Okay, mm-hmm. th- those are two different, absolutely, you know, way different people doing that. You know, their systems work differently. So I think you have to get more and more personalized. Right. I mean, I think that even with our devices, like I said about the Vivace, you know, it's not just, um, you know, I love the term wash, rinse, repeat, right? Make it simple, just wash, rinse, repeat. Right. But unfortunately, with humans, it's not that simple, Mm-mm. right? And with aging, it's not that simple. So, how do we better analyze skin? to deliver the right treatment um, to the patient that is going to give them the results that they want. And so that's where we look at, you know, that's why we like So Me, because it's your own uh, biomolecules that are doing the work, that are doing the heavy lifting. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Technology of Beauty, where I have the opportunity to interview the movers and shakers of the beauty business. All things aesthetics, and today is no exception. Today I have the opportunity to interview Mary Ann Guerra, who is the CEO of the com- fine company that brings us Vivace oh. and, uh, and So Me, and we're going to get to know her a lot better. And so first of all, welcome and thank you very much for coming here to the studio today. Well, Grant, thanks for asking me. This is, uh, I feel very special and especially in light of everybody else who you've interviewed, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a very lucky lady. Well, we're very lucky to have you and to get to know you better. And I must say, you look terrific in that dress. That red color is <laughs> excellent on your skin and hair cone tones. Uh, and in any you. event, <laughs> so let's start at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are you from? I grew up in a small town in northeastern Ohio called Niles, Ohio. Uh So I'm a hardcore Buckeye. Okay. Hence the red. Got it. (laughs) I got it. So, uh, and then where'd you go to school? So uh, went as a young girl, Niles McKinley. That was the high school. Okay. uh, Red Dragons. Um, And then we went, I went to Ohio State. Uh I graduated from there. And then went to George Washington, where I graduated with an MBA in science, innovation, and commercialization. Well, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And your first job was? Oh, wow. That was at the dairy aisle. I soft served ice okay, cream. Okay, your first. Okay, let's take your first job after your MBA. <laughs> okay, you're, you're yeah, asked, I, I did was, say first. I, job. I had to quit eat at that job too because I ate everything, and so uh-huh. I was like, I had to stop doing that. First job after my MBA. Uh, that was um, well. I got my MBA while I was working. So my first job after college okay. was working um, at the uh, Veterans Hospital. Um, and I did. Uh, I was working in the research and development department as an administrative person. Um, and then I left that but still worked at the VA. And it's a, one of my most interesting jobs was as a drug and alcohol counselor. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was um, quite interesting because when I was doing the interview, all of the other drug counselors were ex-drug addicts or ex-alcoholics. Uh-huh. And I was the first one that they ever hired that was college educated, had no drug addictions, had no alcohol and alcohol problem, but they basically were going to change it up. And I was 22 years old. Uh-huh. So um, it was quite, a, quite an experience. And it was a program that was 30 days at least in-house. So I, um, we had 24-hour shifts of folks in there. They were inpatients and um, at night they locked us in. And I was like, well, why are they locking us in? And they said, oh, because one night, you know, one of um, the uh, people that one of the patients knew came in, didn't like them and shot them. So now we locked the door. (laughs) So I was like, so this is in Washington, D.C., right? Of course. So this is, uh, you know, so it was, uh, I was like, wow, it's a whole different experience from me growing up in my little small town in Niles, Ohio. So you got your MBA. I did. So and I went. Why did you enter this okay. industry? Or well, it was what happened. Uh, so um, when I worked at the VAI, I then went and started working for the Cancer Institute there. They had a what was called the NCI um, a medical oncology branch, and uh, that particular branch was looking at lung cancer research. And so that's why they were located at the VA hospital because sure. many veterans had lung cancer. Then I went over to the main campus, which was the NIH campus in Bethesda. Uh And um, I worked uh, for the Cancer Institute there, and then I went on um, and really kind of got my um, 
footing with the different institutes. So I went from the Cancer Institute to Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and that's where I got a chance to work with Tony Fauci. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went to the Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and I was the executive officer of that um, institute, um, which was, so allergy was the third largest, heart, lung, and blood was the second largest, and then I went back to the Cancer Institute, which was the largest one, and was the deputy director of management at the Cancer Institute. And um, For the NIH. For NIH, right. Mm -hmm. And when I was with Allergy, I went back to get my MBA uh, because um, when I was working with Allergy Infectious Diseases, one of the most important things that we saw is they were doing um, research on vaccines and drugs. And everything that they did had to have a commercial counterpart, right? Because you're, you weren't going to be doing drug development or vaccine development in one of the labs at NIH. You had to partner with, with somebody industry. on the commercial side. Right, exactly. So um, so that was, and it was right when AIDS was coming up. So we did the clinical trials. And um, that's what I worked really closely with Tony Fauci because his lab actually, he was the director of the institute then, but he also had his own lab, uh, immune regulation, and they were doing a lot of AIDS research. And so we were looking at AIDS development and drugs and doing the clinical studies there. So it was a fabulous, fabulous uh, opportunity. And uh, I was really blessed to be able to work with some amazing folks, Francis Collins, you know, Nobel laureates, uh -huh. um, you know, uh, Harold Varmus, another Nobel laureate. I mean, pretty, pretty impressive. Group. That's heady stuff. Yeah. Before we go on to aesthetics, tell me what it was like working with Dr. Fauci. Oh, he was great. Uh, I mean, it really was. Uh, you, you know, you love it because he was Italian. I was Italian. So we kind of bonded on on the old uh, cultural thing. And uh, um, I remember the first time I met Tony, um, I was being recruited to NIAID by my former boss from the Cancer Institute, Michael Goldrich, and um, was there on a Saturday and we were interviewing and talking about me coming over, um, you know, from NCI to uh, allergy and Tony walks in and it was the first time I met him and he had a bottle and he's like, Mike, you know, you got a can opener. I want to open this bottle. Right. And Mike's like, no, I don't have that. And I said, I looked at them and I said, okay, two boys from Brooklyn, New York, give me a break. I took the bottle, opened the drawer of the desk, popped open the of bottle. Of course she did. And this to them. So, um, so that was the, kind of the first time. And he's, he was Instant fabulous. bonding. It was instant bonding. And he's, he was so smart. And I mean, and what we were confronting with with AIDS, because that was a point in time where nobody knew there were, you know, no clinical trials yet going on for AIDS, no, you know, drugs or anything going on. It was just that fear like we have with COVID, the fear that I'm going to get HIV and I'm going to die, um, you know, until they worked out, you know, exactly what the virus was and, you know, that um, how it was transmitted and et cetera. But uh, interesting times. But Tony's brilliant. And he's what I loved about Tony. He was one of the first um I think he was the first who would not give up his lab. So whenever you became an NIH director, you would give up your lab if you happened to be at the NIH and you sure. become the director of that institute. But Tony wouldn't give up his lab, so he kept the Laboratory of Immune Regulation. And then he also, so he would come over um, into, we had different buildings, but to Building 10 was the where most of intramural research was. He'd come over there, go to his lab, get to see him all the time, then he'd go back over to Building 31 and become an administrator. But he, so he's a scientist, clinician, um, and uh, business person, administrator. So he's um, really was an amazing man. And I was so thrilled to know that um, with everything going on with COVID, he was still there leading the charge. So that's, that's fabulous. Yeah. So how did you get into the uh, aesthetics business, or, or what happened? <laughs> What's the next one, or did you then get into aesthetics? <laughs> so um, I've always been interested in this whole um, commercialization, and so how do we take great science, and how do we commercialize it? Uh -huh. So, I mean, that's really what I did at um, NIAID, a lot of that, the Cancer Institute, tried to establish these industry relationships. So when I came out to Arizona, um, I worked for the Translational Genomics Research Institute with Jeff Trent, and we were trying to build an organization that would be able to be better equipped to take the research that was done at TGen and move it more quickly into commercialization. And so we had TGen accelerators, and so I was the COO trying to make that happen. Uh -huh. And um, in doing that, I decided um, that institute, like TGen, even though it had amazing science, um, you didn't have enough that enough science that was actually commercially viable, right? Okay. I mean, everybody thinks you have a lot of science and it's great science, but very little 
of your scientific research turns into a commercially viable product. Right. And so what you have to get very good at is figuring out what is that science that can be commercialized. And even though you can make a product, doesn't mean people will buy the product. Right. And so you have to have the vetting of, okay, what's a good product? What's going to you know work in, um, in uh, commercialization? Who's going to fund it? Who's going to invest in it? Mm-hmm. So um, with TGen, I then spun off a, a group called BioXL, and it was a biomedical uh, device company startup um, organization. And the concept there was to try to get uh, money, uh, philanthropy actually it was a nonprofit to take that first early risk in these companies that we're trying to, or these entrepreneurs. So we worked with the universities, we worked with entrepreneurs, we identified what we thought was good science, we vetted it, we put the early money in, we made sure they had good IP, we made sure they were on the right path to FDA, and then hopefully because we had that strong vetting and um, set up that great foundation for a new company, a uh, startup company that investors would invest in it. So I did that, and then um, my investors said, you know, if you can do this, Marianne, we'd really like to see you start a company (laughs) because we'd invest in your company. And so um, then Radio Frequency came along, RF, and Mm -hmm. it was new, um, and it was (coughs) in aesthetics, and I looked at the aesthetics industry, and I said... (coughs) That's an industry that's not going to get smaller. <laughs> it's only sure. going to get larger. Um, and radio frequency was new, and I found that really interesting. So we had an opportunity to get the Vivachi device, and um, we got it cleared through FDA, and we got it cleared, I think it was January 16th, uh, 2016. And then I raised the capital uh, to get the company between March and April, and we sold our first device in May of 2016, and we've been off and running since. So... Why don't you tell our audience what the radio frequency device is and how it works in terms of uh, with the microneedling and so forth? Because a lot of the viewers and listeners do not understand what you just said. Okay, so <laughs> uh, so what's um, so microneedling has been around for a very long time, Correct. and the, the the beauty of microneedling was purposeful injury. If you put needles in your face or your body, your body is not going to like that and it's going to have a natural response to healing. Um, And because it's beneath the epidermis, um, um, the healing is going to stimulate collagen and elastin to uh, uh, address that wound that you've just created. Mm -hmm. The radio frequency allowed you to create more thermal damage because you put the radio frequency in there. So the damage was more than just uh, purposeful injury. It it, it created this... um, uh, more collagen, more elastin stimulated, and also did tightening. So when you do radio frequency, you can do the purposeful injury, create that area of thermal damage that stimulates collagen and elastin. And basically, um, we all one of the things we say, it's like you're a pillow. You know, when you have a pillow you love, it loses all its fluff, and then it gets a little saggy. But you, if you put more feathers in it, it's going to puff it up. Your skin is like that. So, you know, you do the radio frequency, you put the needles um, in the face. And our particular device has 36 gold tip needles that go into the face. It emits the radio frequency while the needles are beneath the epidermis. That stimulates the thermal damage, and then um, the healing stimulates the collagen and elastin and fluffs everything back up again and then tightens the skin. Um, and what does the recovery look like? Well, with the Vivace, uh, the recovery is amazing. Um, I could have had it um, yesterday and been in here talking to you today mm-hmm. um, without any problem. Um, it's um, We recommend one megahertz. We recommend an insulated needle. Uh, The insulated needle allows you to have the thermal damage um, directed. You know exactly where it's going because you know how deep the needle is into the skin because the Vivace allows you to go up to 3.5 millimeters deep in the skin. So you know where you're delivering that thermal damage. And when you have the uh, insulated needle, you know exactly where you're putting that damage. And then if you layer it, like we suggest, we call it 3D, um, our 3D protocol, you layer it starting as as deepest and then going toward the surface, but you don't damage the skin because you have the insulation. So you don't get the tracking and things on the face unless you're doing it incorrectly, Mm -hmm. or unless you get a little bit carried away with the amount of radio frequency that you want to have. Um, The one thing we've really learned about radio frequency, and it's been an interesting evolution when we first started, um, everybody thought, okay, the more 
you know, radio frequency, the higher power you have, you know, the better it's going to be, more thermal damage, more thermal damage. And what we've learned is that's actually not necessarily the case. Um, what you need is the thermal damage, uh, but you you don't need to hurt people, right? I mean, so a lot of so people don't want pain. Good thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, people were cranking uh, like our device goes up to the ten power level, but we typically recommend four, five, and six power levels. So we don't even recommend seven, eight, or nine, or ten, okay. um, because you can still get what you need in terms of the damage to uh, beneath it to the damage to the dermis to get the results that you want to have. Mm -hmm. And um, we learned that, um, you know, we got some great advisors like Emil Tangetti and Dave Vasily early on, and they were like, we know it works, but we're not quite sure why it works. You know, <laughs> you need to do some studies as to why it works. And um, we just had a, a, a uh, paper published in October. Um, it was a porcine study that we did that looked at thermal damage. So we looked at how much thermal damage we had at uh, 3.5 millimeters, 3 millimeters, etc. We looked at one and two megahertz. We looked at um, the on time. So your radio frequency on time. So you're going to have it. The um, duration. Yep. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 100 milliseconds or 800 milliseconds. Okay. And so uh, we took that data and we were able to look at that and say, okay, you know, it's like an algorithm for how you should be treating your patients. It shouldn't be necessarily the same for every patient because everybody's skin is a different depth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the forehead, you're, you know, you obviously, you, it's not as deep there as it's going to be on the cheeks. And so you want to make sure, one, is you understand the patient. Okay. And two, you understand the device and what the device is doing and can do. And, and third, you want to understand what you should do so that you combine all those together. And the Vivace is great because you can, you know, modify the on time, the duration up to 800 milliseconds. You can modify the power and you can modify the depth. Um, and what we've also learned through the study is um, if you have it on, say, the six power level mm -hmm. and 800 seconds, milliseconds duration, you know, if somebody's in pain, you say you stop and you turn it down, right? right? You don't just keep making them go you know, through a painful process. And, you know, basically you can drop it down to like, usually it's like um, six and 500 milliseconds on, on time. But if you drop it to five, you can up it to 800 milliseconds on time. And then mm -hmm. you still are getting therm the same thermal damage. You're just doing it differently. Right. And it's that mix and match that's really nice that allows you to deliver patient comfort. So our patients, uh, the physicians love the Vivace because the patients, one, don't feel a whole lot of pain. And patients don't like pain. No. Two, they're back at work the next day, right? Oh, I mean, sure. without the tracking. And three, they look good. Uh -huh. You know, so, I mean, that's a definitely a, you know, home run. Do you use topical anesthetic? Yes. Um, on everybody, um, regardless of the depth? So, yes, typically, except um, you don't need it usually if it's um, on the <laughs> neck um, or the uh, the chin area here. I mean, usually, Can you do the decolletage? Yes, yes. And you don't have to have it on. At least um, we, we suggest you don't need to have the numbing cream on that. On the face, you do. And how often would you recommend a patient uh, uh, get the treatment? Uh -huh. um, we recommend four to six weeks, three treatments to start out with, and then they can um, come back um, every few months after that. Uh, we we have found that people like the treatment so much that they. Um, do it more frequently, and they'll also do it if they have an event coming up, you know, like if they have a wedding or they have, um, you know, they're going to be on a show like this and they want to, you know, look good, and it just um, really makes your skin look refreshed, tightened, et cetera. So How soon after the procedure do you see these visible changes? You know, the next day, uh, the first couple of days, people will usually look at you and say, what'd you do? You look really good. Did you get back from a vacation, right? You know, if they haven't seen you because um, it just tightens everything. It makes your skin look... Um, glowy, okay. um, you know, uh, to see the real results of, of the collagen, you know, it's going to be four to six weeks. Um, but, and it's funny because people, um, you know, they forget what they used to look like. So when you do the Vizia photos and you digital, um, after, you know, a couple treatments and they're like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's really a big difference. So, um, but I like it because the physicians love it, uh, because their patients come back. And for us, um, as a company, we really want to have a partnership with the physicians. Um, we want to provide products and we want to provide service at a company that really understands and responds to the physicians. Um, and um, 
also delivers great ROI, right? We also want the patients to be happy, but the bottom line is, um, you know, if we design like a Vivace, we have a great device Mm -hmm. that the patients love, it's great for the physician because that patient comes back. And we created, um, you know, we did some beautiful branding around the Vivace. I think it's, it's the best out there. Um, if we just did a survey um, in real self and we were like the number one uh, device out of seven other that. devices. Yeah. I mean, people recognize the Vivace. They might get RF microneedling, but the name they recognize is Vivace and mm-hmm. the Vivace experience. And that was when I, early on, when I started in 2016, we were like, I was like, let's look at the whole patient. Let's look at that whole experience. Let's think about from the time they walk in and get a treatment. It doesn't do me any good if I give you a great device for your office if everybody hates it, you Mm -hmm. know, and they're in pain and they don't want to come back. But if I give you a device or the experience that allows that patient to feel really good, they're going to come back and they're going to love you and they're going to say, Dr. Stevens, you're wonderful. What else can you do for me, right? right? So the Vivace experience... We looked at different numbing creams and we came up with a compounding numbing cream that we felt was good and that we recommended to the physicians. Of course, it's up to the physician to decide what they want. Sure. Um, then we gave them what we said was the best device, which is the Vachi RF microneedling device. And then we have a post um, serum that we use. So as soon as the uh, treatment is done and the channels are still open for a little bit, you put the serum on. It basically helps uh, take away redness, make sure that you don't have any, um, you know, uh, melanocyte suppression, things like that. And then a mask and the mask takes away the redness. And you can either have them stay at the office and put the mask on, or you can say, hey, you go home now, put your feet up, put the mask on, and relax. And there's usually enough, um, in the, we give a little kit, and they go home with a little bit of the serum left. Mm-hmm. And if you give them the mask, and they and the patients love that, because they go home and they're like, oh, this is still cool. I still have a little bit of this. I'm still going through that experience. And so they think about the positive experience that they've had with you, not only in your office, but oh, at home. home. And what's in the serum? Are there growth factors? No, it, well, the HA, and then mm-hmm. there's... Um, a, different um, peptides. Um, and so there's a different combination of peptides or sweet peptides in the post-care um, serum. And then there's a few other different peptides that are in the mask, um, all designed to get rid of the redness, <coughs> accelerate healing. Um, and so and it's um, it was very interesting because when we first started, physicians didn't want the whole kit. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I know what I want. And, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And we said, that's great. We sold the needles and, you know, we have this kit if you want it. And um, it went from 25% in the first year um, of buying kits. Mm -hmm. And now it's like 75% of our... Because the post-procedure... It works so well. Uh Uh-huh. And how long do you recommend that they wear the mask? Oh, the mask is like 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so you can wear it a half an hour, but 15 minutes will do the trick and get the redness out of it. Um, so, I, I mean, I've been known to have the treatment in the morning and stay in the office and work. I mean, it's really very, very nice. I bet. Now, tell me about So Me. How uh, does that come along and how does that okay. relate back to Vivace? Okay. Well, So Me's our baby um, because the uh, Vivace is a fabulous uh, radio frequency micro needling device, but it was developed in Korea. So, So Me um, is our own product. Um, so, for Aesthetics Biomedical, it was a product that we designed um, within um, Aesthetics Biomedical. Uh, we patented it. Um, in fact, about three weeks ago, we just got our second patent on it, um, mm-hmm. and it's patenting the whole personalized approach um, to um, skin care treatment. So it's basically saying, okay, um, we believe the more you can personalize a product, the better it's going to work for you. So if you're using your own growth factors, so growth factors are good, right. but hopefully your own are better, right? I mean, and you see that with platelet-rich plasma or stem cells or where you know wherever we're going with the regenerative medicine. Mm-hmm. So um, because um, there's been such an uptake on platelet-rich plasma, like in 2020, they listed 16 what they called the top um, you know top treatments or you know, products or whatever. Number one was uh, PRP for hair. Number two was PRP for skin. And number nine was actually RF microneedling. So uh, Mm -hmm. just to put it in the perspective of the top 16 that they had said. Uh, But platelet-rich plasma um, 
everyone's using it for injections. Um, it's basically spinning your own blood down and getting your own platelets, your own biomolecules, mm -hmm. and then using it for, you know, uh, facial injections, uh, hair injections, to use your own growth factors to stimulate, you know, again, collagen, elastin, hair growth, um, you know, whatever you, as a physician you're using it for. Right. So what we um, heard from physicians is, you know, we love PRP, but it's only good for four to six hours. Mm -hmm. And so we set out to disprove that. And what we were able to do with our SOMI serum is to uh, take those platelets and keep them in their current state um, so that they don't degranulate in four to six hours. They maintain um, their uh, natural state for up to um, 90 to 120 days. Now, what that allowed the physician to do if they wanted to do it was to take our SOMI serum, take the platelet-rich plasma, um, and basically the way it works is 27 mLs of our serum, 3 mLs of someone's platelet-rich plasma, and then they have their own personalized topical skincare product that they can take home with them. Um, and they, what we also learn, and as part of um, our process, is you have to activate it. So we, we, what we learned was how to not activate those platelets, right? right. And then we realized, oh, how do you, how do you activate them? How do you right. turn them on? Exactly. So what we discovered <laughs> is that if you change the temperature, so typically if you put it in your hands and you do this, you change the temperature and you'd also, um, the energy or the, um, the motion with your hand would cause those to activate. But what we further learned then is if you put it in a refrigerator, and it's cold, and then you take it out, and then you put it on, and you use the mechanical and the energy that you're doing and heat it up and put it on your face, all of the platelets immediately start to degranulate, and you get the benefit of all of the biomolecules that are in those uh, platelets that can penetrate the skin. And that's what gives you the benefit of it. So it's your own personalized topical skincare product. Do you use the SOMI immediately following the Vibache also? So or you, does that have anything to do with that serum? You know, you um, so what we've learned is uh, many physicians love to put PRP on post Vivace mm -hmm. or post RF microneedling. Um, and so um, what we suggest is go ahead and do that. Use your, you know, PRP post treatment and then you know, draw enough of the uh, PRP so that you could send them home with their own personalized topical Makes product sense. for day-to-day -day use, mm -hmm. um, you know. and um, But it is, um, SOMI is really good if you do have more ablative uh, procedure done. Uh, we've been doing a little bit of testing of it with the plasma pen, which is um, a great technology. Um, it's really nice on the eyelids where, you know, Vivace, you're not going to put 36 needles in somebody's eye, uh -uh. but on the plasma, you can actually get around the eyes, but it's a much more um, aggressive and you have more days, a week of downtime. And if you couple it with something like So Me, it actually reduces the downtime. It accelerates the healing because you're using your own growth factors for the healing. So what we've, um, in working with the different physicians, some of the physicians are now um, doing the PRP and doing one bottle and using it post ablative treatments like CO2 mm -hmm. and sending them home with one bottle. And then if they want to come back for more and others are using it as their day to day, uh, send the patients home with their own personalized skincare product. So it's a choice. Okay. And how long would one bottle last a typical consumer, say, using it on their face and neck? Is it like a month Yeah, a it's, couple months? It's at least a month. Um, I, I mean, I use it pretty liberally. I, I use three shots in the morning and two shots in the afternoon. We recommend two. Uh, but I like to put it on my neck and get it down into my decollete. Some just want to use it on their face. But it's absolutely a month, if not longer. Um, How does that couple up with lasers, say ablative or non-ablative lasers? It sounds like that would accelerate the healing. Yes, it does. It's wonderful. So, um, you know, we've been lucky enough to, uh, the one thing that I also love about our companies, we want to partner. I don't want to do something that everybody else is doing. Uh -huh. I want to do something different. And particularly if somebody else does it better, why should I copy what somebody else is doing? So uh, we've um, had a nice little partnership with Sinusure and with Alma and they've asked us to come to their meetings to talk about So Me uh -huh. because their treatments really do have some downtime. And they love the So Me because it will accelerate, you know, the healing process. So we've got a nice little partnership going there. And those, those are the physicians that are buying So Me at those meetings that are really pushing and saying what 
how well it does post um, ablative treatments and non-ablative. I mean, mm-hmm. um, you know, so, I mean, I, I personally had a CO2 and it definitely, you know, within two days uh, changed the whole demeanor of my, of my face um, using the SOMI product. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, it, it's fun. I mean, we're really looking, um, we're excited that we developed it. We're excited um, that, you know, we were able to put it out in the market. And we're excited that it might have other opportunities too. And I think that's what's... Um, so is it clinically available today? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And you mentioned partnering with other companies. You like to partner, you said. Oh, Any absolutely. Any other partnerships uh, going on? You mentioned uh, Alma. Yes, so... And- um, we've got uh, Skinceuticals is uh-huh. another one of our um, good partners. Um, we they love the Vivace device too. Um, they've uh, when they go into practices and they hear a lot about what RF microneedling works really well. Vivace is one of them. So we started talking to them about their CE Ferulic because obviously very many people love the CE Ferulic. Yes. So what we did is entered a partnership with them. I guess it's almost about a year ago now. Um, uh, that um, you would have the Vivace Experience Kit, which includes the needle, the serum, the Boost Serum I told you about, and the mm-hmm. Soothe Recovery Mask. Right. And now we add in a small bottle of CE Frulic. So you use our things immediately post-treatment um, and that night, uh, and then the next day you get to use the CE Frulic um, that's part of the experience package right now. And that's to be used once a day, twice a day, three um, times? On the C. Frulic, the C. Frulic. Uh, one we're suggesting once a day, but okay. that again is it's physician directed, and you know, uh, in what um, SkinCeuticals recommends. And then um, you know, we've launched a new um, partnership with Galderma, right? So um, mm-hmm. you buy a Vivace, and you get the benefit of the um, partnership that we set up with Galderma to have access to Dysport. And so it's nice to have these partnerships, which you know, benefit again, the physician, it's the yes. physician and partner, the right? Exactly. Uh, but you know, it, 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 helps you if you're buying, um, in this instance, if you buy our kits, you're going to get the benefit of that relationship. If you buy a nude Vivace, you're really going to get the benefit of that, uh, relationship. So we're excited. We're really excited about that. We had, uh, Fleming on our uh, program on this program, uh, who is the, uh, as you know, the CEO of Galderma. It was very interesting to get to know him for the yep. first time. He was an excellent uh, interview, and uh, Galderma seems to be firmly uh, committed to uh, advancing their aesthetics mm-hmm. portion of their business. Right. So it's interesting to hear that you're partnering with Galderma. That's well, the first it, I've heard it's of really that. nice um, to do that. We learn a lot, um, you know, and I think um, we're really lucky because I believe we have a outstanding marketing uh, platform. Um, if you look at uh, Vivace, again, it's, you know, the one most recognized by consumers, you mm-hmm. know, um, you know, 66% of consumers said they would use want the Vivace over seven other leading RF microneedling devices, you know, it gets three times the ratings that any other microneedling v- device gets on real self. I mean, so we've really not only delivered a great product, but for the physician, again, it's much easier to buy a product that everybody else knows and loves oh, sure. and, you know, you, you have it validated. Um, and we've had some interesting um, experiences through um, COVID, um, you know, where you can't get into the um, practices and we can't do uh, the uh, demos that we used to do. And so we started an, an experiment in December and we had not even one of our salespeople, but one of our um, individuals that manages our lead generation. Uh-huh. And she um, started doing Zoom calls with folks. And so we've had um, a number of sales where we do no, no demo Zooms because they know Vivace so well, they call us up on a lead, you know, that's been generated through our um, lead generation program or digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we call, we walk them through everything, we show them, and they're buying it without even having a demo uh, because we've done so well. That's the um, physician. The office. physician. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, we feel that fits their needs because right now they don't want a lot of people in their offices. So we're trying to be very conscious of you know, what the physician needs, what works for them right now, uh, but also what do we need to do to be able to make sure that, you know, we're getting the devices out there and, you know, we're continuing the business um, that, um, you know, we're in business to do. Right, sure. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, I'm kind of curious how COVID has affected you in any other ways. You mentioned the Zoom sales, which is very creative, and we've all been spending a lot of time on 
Zoom, Zoom. that's for sure. I did two <laughs> interviews today on Zoom for this wonderful program. Uh, how else might have uh, COVID affected you either personally uh, or corporately? Um, so as a small business, um, obviously, um, COVID has been a major um, impact on us. And when March, so March 17th, I closed the business down for four months because I felt like um, we needed to jump on it very quickly. Um, and everybody worked from home. And we only had a, a couple layoffs of our salespeople because they just couldn't get out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rest, we kept everybody else um, on. You. Yeah, I was really happy. I mean, uh, you know, our executive team took pay cuts and that just to make sure that we didn't affect anybody else. So uh, I love the team. They, they mm -hmm. really care about each other. It's not just all about me. So... Um, Everybody worked from home, and it was really amazing is how much people did. So we used that time to um, uh, Sheldon, who's our chief marketing officer, created um, How Do You Needle program on Instagram Live. And it was every week that we were doing it through uh, COVID just to kind of keep people interested, let them know that Vivace was still there. Um, and it combined, like, um, an influencer um, with a provider. And they mm -hmm. talked about, you know, why they like the Vivace as a provider and, you know, the, um, the Instagram um, or the influencer talked about why they liked it, you know, from the personal perspective. Sure. And those really took off. And so we did those through March or April, May and June, and they still taken off. So we're still doing those. And, uh -huh. you know, they've got over a million followers on those, those different Instagrams. So that helped build up, you know, um, more of the consumers paying attention to what we were doing. It also, since physicians um, and providers had time to a little bit more time to do things, they watched them. And so we, we really took advantage of that time to get our name out there. We created um, a platform, which is called uh, Vivachi Direct for our physicians again and for the providers and basically um, the we now every week send an email or a text to uh, the provider who's ever signed up for Vivace Direct and it gives them updates on here's what's happening with training here's something new we learned clinical we have a new protocol um, you know and it or it'll give them a website go look at this here's our Instagram live but it really keeps us connected with them but not with you know a 20 page document but with a quick uh, text that says here's the what you need to know and here's where you can go to find out more information and um, we uh, have launched um, our own Facebook um, uh, page to, uh, not page, but group to also try to get um, the word out to our providers information that they need to know when they need to know it. So we've used this time when things were going slow to build up these other programs, cool. our lead generation, et cetera. Yeah. So we you know, I felt like we were busy the whole time. We weren't making any money, but we were busy. <laughs> Well, you're getting ready for the next. <laughs> we are getting ready. That's the next right. Phase, That's right? right. That's right. I mean, when you're a small business and you go without having any sales or consumables for three months, oh, um, it's tough. You know, it is. Um, you Same. Know. I know. I yeah, was. You, I'm you, a small business that's too. Right. That's right. And you're here that's in California, right. and so that's you know. Right. I mean, we had a little bit more flexibility in Arizona, but uh, California really shut down. Um, but I mean, I think you know, as in anything, you just have to take advantage of. A situation, you know, uh, it's like I told the staff in a meeting on Wednesday uh, for 2021, it's, you know, focus on the positive, focus on the positive, because you can say how bad it was, you know, but that's not going to do you any good. Mm -mm. When we look at this, and I, I mean, I said, you know, we're still in business. We still have all of our employees on. We just hired four new salespeople last week and are getting them oriented. I said, we're, you know, we're moving ahead while others, some, you know, have closed down yes. and people have lost their jobs. Um, you know, so, you know, I'm very proud of my team because they didn't let up um, through all of this. And, you know, we're all back at work now and we're all, um, you know, hopefully moving and shaking and looking at the new paradigm and how do we modify our business uh, practices to conform to the new norm. Uh -huh. um, and um, again, how do we deliver better products to the physician um, and to the consumer? Because that's really what it's all about, you know, not just doing a slight variation on an old thing, but how do we communicate with our physicians to figure out what the next big thing is going to be that's terrific well that's 
part and parcel of the technology of beauty, right? That's right. That's right. So are you going to the Aesthetic Society meeting in Miami in the, in the spring? Our plan is to do that. We're excited. Uh, we just had a paper accepted there um, on SOMI. Um, and in terms of what we've learned in terms of the preservation of platelets. Um, and um, so we're excited that that um, is going to be presented at that meeting. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. And, and it'll I be nice to actually you. be at a meeting. I want to personally <laughs> thank you for your support of our society, the Aesthetic Society. Well, it's a, uh, it's we a appreciate great industry support, yeah. and you've been right there helping yeah. us. And uh, congratulations on getting that paper accepted. Thank you. We like science, yeah. and if you can show us the science behind things like So Me, then we're going to be that much more interested. Yeah. Well, that's uh, you know I, I think one of the things I took away from you know my time at NIH. Uh -huh. um, you know, for me, um, I think I've told you before. You know, when I first started in the aesthetics business, and everybody was talking about the before and after photos, I didn't get it. You know, it's like, you know, we have to have more before and afters. And I'm like, yeah, but what about the data? Yeah. You know, and so <laughs> I, we, we, it was like, you know, they were more that pesky concerned. Data. Yeah, that pesky data, you know, where is it? And so, you know, we worked on that. And, and of course, I now know exactly why you need to have the before and afters too, because, you know, you need to show the science and then you need to show that it does make a difference. I mean, so I've come a long way on that. But you need both. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and um, I don't feel comfortable um, going out and telling you you should buy something if I don't know why you should buy it. And I have data behind why you should buy it. And uh, when we did SOMI, you know, we did two clinical studies on that. Uh, Dr. Zoe Dralos, um, you know, led the studies and uh, Zoe's a um, brilliant uh, dermatologist and she's tough. I mean, and so she didn't let us get away with anything, you know, and, um, and then when we saw the beautiful outcomes from the study, um, you know, we were just excited about it. So, you know, when you, when you have a great product and you have great science, um, you know, what more is there, you know? That's right. That's now we just need a lot deal. of consumers buying it. There you go. Get the <laughs> word be, out. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know you brought your crystal ball. It's somewhere in your hand. Yeah, it's in my hand. So I'd like you to look into it. And uh, you've been in this aesthetics business relatively short time compared right. to a number of the people that right. are guests on this program. Tell me what you see in the next one, three, five, and even 10 years. What, how's the world going to change in aesthetics? So um, more and more people are going to be using aesthetic products. Okay. You know, um, you're going to have more men. Um, you're going to have from uh, younger and to older. Um, so that market isn't going to get smaller. It's going to get bigger. Um, I believe you're going to have uh, more and more interest in, um, you know, natural products um, where uh, they want simple, they want natural. And so I think that when we're looking at any kind of product you put, you know, you know, non-cruelty, all of those things, you know, are out there. Um, but I think it's all leading towards personalized. Okay, so now all of a sudden, you know, when you have this range of a 26-year-old doing RF microneedling um, to, you know, a 75-year-old you doing RF microneedling, okay, mm -hmm. th those are two different, Absolutely. you know, way different people doing that you know their systems work differently so i think you have to get more and more personalized right i mean i think that even with our devices like i said about the vivace you know it's not just um you know i love the term wash rinse repeat right make it simple just wash rinse repeat right. but unfortunately with humans it's not that simple mm -mm. right and with aging it's not that simple so how do we better analyze skin to deliver the right treatment um, to the patient that is going to give them the results that they want. And so that's where we look at, you know, that's why we like So Me, because it's your own uh, biomolecules that are doing the work, that are doing the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. um, you're not guessing. Like, derms love it because we, since we launched it, no one has had any reaction, negative reaction to So Me. Makes sense. Uh, which is so, great, right? Yeah. You know, you, you, the last thing you want to do is do a treatment and then have that treatment complicated because you put the wrong topical product on it post, oh, absolutely. right? So I think we're going to be moving towards, you know, what, how do we deliver more and more, um, you know, personalized product? How do we develop devices that help you um, understand the individual that you're treating better. You know, um, you know, we've talked about, you know, hydration with radio frequency, right? You know, if you're better hydrated, then, you know, you're going to get a better outcome. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you know if the person's hydrated or not? 
Uh, did you drink your eight ounces of you know water before your treatment? <laughs> oh, sure I did. Right. I mean, you don't know if they did or not. You don't know if the skin's hydrated or not. You know. But what if you could? What if you could do better analysis? Um, data. So collecting the data from these treatments, you know, obviously, you know, we, you know, have to be sensitive to HIPAA and all of those things, but accumulating data and then analyzing that data to um, understand the treatments that were given, the outcomes that happened, and then again, how do you translate that data, there's that pesky data again, Mm -hmm. into something that is going to be a next generation device or a next generation product or solve a problem that's been facing you that you didn't even realize um, that you could solve that problem until you get the data and you can look at the data. Um, so I think that's my uh, my crystal ball is I think we're, we're going to do that. And I think over time, um, you know, five years, 10 years, this whole personalized thing is going to become hopefully easier and easier to do. Um, you know, right now, uh, PRP was a big thing. I mean, fat is a great source of um, your own... Um, you know, growth factors, I mean, mm-hmm. even more robust than PRP, but it's really hard to extract fat and, and do something with it at point of care, you know, but can you do that in the future? Can you do something where, you know, we could take the, um, you know, platelets and somebody doesn't have to come in and get their, you know, blood drawn um, every single time. So I think you're going to see that evolution of things happening, and that's going to take time and technology to, to make that happen. Uh, but hopefully aesthetics biomedical is going to be right there at the forefront, and um, we're already thinking about all of those things, obviously, uh, you know, and um, hope to be out with more firsts. I mean, so me as a first, nobody else has, you know, uh, the ability to uh, preserve um, platelets for 90 to 120 days. And so we're really proud of that as a small, relatively new startup company. Um, you know, so we're, we're waiting for the next big things that we have to impress all of, all of you out there with our thinking and our creativity and the innovation that we have. That's fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today. I've learned a lot and I want to applaud your uh, uh, aspirations and your <laughs> pursuit of data. And your scientific pursuit, because you know there's a lot of hand-waving in the aesthetics business. And Aesthetics Biomedical, under your leadership, has done a fabulous job. And I encourage you to continue down that path, because we do need data, and we need science. And uh, with that, we can give our patients much better personalized care, Mm -hmm. as you're doing with the combination of SOMI and with your... Of Vivace. Well, the world needs science. You know, I mean, right now when you see the world struggling with whether they should take a COVID vaccine because mm-hmm. they don't trust science, you know, we need to ch- turn the corner on that because, yes. you know, science is important in, in our daily lives, whether it's for our face, whether it's for our um, ecosystem, you know, um, but um, I do think that sound. We, we need to trust science. Um, you know, I trust you as a physician, um, and I trust you because you were trained and you have that knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we need to build that trust back up um, so that, uh, you know, we, we can all keep ourselves safe and healthy and beautiful. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And that's why I'm vaccinated. There, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Twice. Twice. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, <clears throat> once again, thank you all very much for joining us today on the Technology of Beauty. We had the opportunity to get to know Marianne Guerra who is the CEO of Aesthetics Biomedical, and they bring us Vivace and the So Me Personalized Skin Care Regimen and Products. And I want to thank you again for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And I Always look, with you, Grant. <laughs> thank you very much, Ryan. And I look forward to seeing all of you each and every Tuesday where we get to uh, interview the movers and shakers of the aesthetics business here on The Technology of Beauty. Take care. Stay safe.